Building a no-code SaaS application can be a massive undertaking because we're talking about business tools here. And there are hundreds, if not thousands of business operations that you could potentially include in your app. But I've seen way too many entrepreneurs spend one, two, or even more years building their applications before ever really being able to put them to use. And I don't want that to happen for you. And so today we're gonna go through strategy to help you take your app idea, scope it out and decide exactly which features need to go in the first version, the next version, and so on. And these are features that are gonna be high value to users that they'll pay for or high value to your own business. And make sure you stick around until the end because again, if you're building a SaaS application, I don't want you to spend the next one or two years trying to put this into use. So stick around, all of this information is vital for you. If you're new here, I'm Kristen over at Coaching No Code Apps. We help non-technical entrepreneurs build custom apps so they can start their app-based businesses or grow their existing businesses all without coding. And if that's what you're doing, then subscribe for new videos to help you every single week. So if you're not quite sure whether this is the process that you should be going through with your app, let me help you with that. So we're talking about SaaS applications and ERP apps. A SaaS application is a software as a service and an ERP is an enterprise resource planning app. An ERP is essentially a business operational tool. So any type of tool that's going to help a business operate in some way. And a SaaS application is essentially some sort of tool that you are charging a subscription for. So instead of a user having a license to a product, for example, you're giving them a monthly or maybe an annual subscription to your ERP app. So if that fits any of what you're doing, then carry forward, this is for you. First up, you need to decide which operations your app is going to be covering for these businesses. And we're gonna go through some different possible areas and your app might be covering one of these areas or multiples, or maybe one for now and multiples over time. So if we look at a business, we have lead generation. Every single business will need to generate potential leads or potential customers, clients. We have lead nurture. Every single business, no matter what it is, is going to have to nurture those leads or those customers or those potential customers because not every single one of them is going to make a purchase right in that moment. And then every single business is going to need to have some sort of a sales process, no matter how simple or elongated that sales process might be. Every single business is going to have a fulfillment process, again, no matter how simple or complex that might be. And then every business is going to have a retention or potential upsell process as well. So this is where you are trying to retain a customer for longer or maybe sell them something else after they've bought an initial product or service. So we have lead gen, lead nurture, sales, fulfillment, and retention or upsell. And at this point, you probably already know where your app is going to fit into, at least for now. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky though, because if you look at each of these components of a business, you'll start to see entire business departments being made up. So for example, we have lead gen and lead nurture. This can be an entire marketing department. We have sales, that can be an entire sales department. We have fulfillment, which is in and of itself an entire department. And then we have retention and upsell, which could fit into the sales department or the fulfillment or really both. So we're talking about really, really big business components. And that's why it's so easy for these SaaS ERP apps to get really complex. Okay, so now this is gonna get more actionable and you're gonna have some homework. What I want you to do is figure out which business component or components your app is going to address. And you need to come up with every single, if this, then that statement or operation that your app is going to handle. So this is pretty much every single micro process that happens within one of those business components that your app is going to handle for 
your app's users. So we're gonna go through some examples so you know exactly what I mean. These are gonna be random examples that could apply to various businesses just to give you an idea and we'll go down the line here. So starting with lead gen, an if this, then that statement might be that, you know, when we post social media content, our VA, our virtual assistant, pulls the analytics into our dashboard so we can see the outcome. For lead nurture, this could be when a prospective customer adds their phone number in a lead generation form, then we add them to a list to follow up with a phone call if they don't make a purchase within one week afterwards. For a business sales process, we might have something like if a service technician conducts a free inspection with a prospective customer and that customer does not purchase, then the sales technician follows up with that customer three times using our standard template to try and schedule a paid service afterwards. Looking at fulfillment for maybe a physical products business, when we are down to 10 remaining products in our inventory, we add a tag to that specific SKU to show that we're running low on inventory. And then finally, looking at retention or upsell, an example could be when a client or customer's contract is coming to a close, we call them to see if we can move them into a recurring service afterwards. Now, there are two ways to look at this. The first is if you aren't quite sure yet what your app is going to handle, then going through an exercise like this is going to help you list out every single operation a business has. And from there, you're gonna be able to go through that list and see which of those operations can be automated or supported with an app, right? Not every single business process will be automated, but that's gonna allow you to pick out the ones that should be. And then the second is if you already do know exactly what you want your app to handle, then going through this list is going to help you scope out your app number one. You're gonna have a very, very specific scope. It's also going to help you create kind of like a more practical version of a wireframe. A wireframe is going to take a lot of time to put together from a design perspective, but when you go through and you create your if, if this, then that statement flow, essentially, you're showing yourself exactly which pages you need to create in your app or which groups, which navigational flows need to be present. And you're also creating kind of like a framework for your testing that you're going to need to carry out throughout your development. If this happens in the app, well, then this other thing should happen, right? So this is kind of just the base of that. Obviously, there's a lot more involved in that, but this is really the foundational piece that's going to set you up for success in every single one of those areas. So if you sit down and you really go through this process, then you could end up with a, a massive scope, or you likely will end up with that. So let's say if your app is covering lead gen, let's say you have 25 specific processes or flows that you come up with. With lead nurture, maybe 20, let's say we have 50 for sales, let's say we have 150 for fulfillment, and then let's go to 30 for retention and upsell. I'm just putting random numbers up here, but if you look at the iPad and, and you look at these um, different business components that your app is going to cover, let's say you are Let's say actually you're just going to be focusing on fulfillment. Well, you might have a development scope of 150 different micro functions that need to be built within your app. Now, that can feel very overwhelming, and especially if those are pretty significant functions within a business, there's a lot of development that can go into that. So there's another step we wanna go through to help organize this further. All right, so the next piece of your homework here is you're going to take that entire list that you've come up with and I want you to label every single function or flow on that list with one of three colors. In red, you're going to label every single function that is currently causing a business to lose time or lose money. So these are processes or 
workflows, procedures within a business that are currently causing that business waste. So you're going to go through your list and label every single one of those in red. So for example, let's say that we have customers or prospective customers who fill out a form with their email address and their phone number to get a coupon code. When they don't use that coupon within the next week, we call them so that we can hopefully help them become a customer using that coupon code. Well, as a business, we have figured out that seven out of every 10 prospective customers don't actually receive that phone call because they don't answer on the first time. And then they their names kind of get, I don't know, they fall into the abyss because of human error, right? But when customers or prospective customers do get those phone calls, we've determined that our revenues increase by 20%. Totally random example, but you can see how with that one process, the business is currently losing money. If the process was fixed, i.e. automated so that the human error didn't happen, that business would be saving that money or making that money. Okay, moving on, in yellow, I want you to label every single process or flow where a company is not necessarily losing money or losing time, but they could actually be making more money or saving time if a certain process was automated. So let's say that for retention and upsell, we have a business who is actually calling or meeting with every single customer whose contract is coming to a close in order to have a conversation about staying on board as a customer. But with your application, you think you can improve their retention process by moving that conversation three weeks earlier and you're going to automate a way that prompts a sales rep to have a conversation with that customer three weeks before their contract actually comes to a close. So you can see how the, the red and the yellow labels differ a little bit because the red is where a business is actually actively losing money and time because of a broken process. Whereas with yellow, they have an inefficient process that isn't broken, but could be improved. And then lastly, in green, I want you to label every single process where you might not be able to save time or money for a business or even make time or money for a business, but you have an idea for how you could just make a process a little bit more convenient or user friendly. So let's say that right now when sales representatives are calling prospective customers, they are typing in notes uh, within a system that says, you know, this person wasn't interested right now, but follow up three weeks from now or follow up one month from now. And it's a little bit manual really because they're typing it in and you have an idea to make the process a little bit more automated by adding a drop down menu or tags or something like that into your own application. So not a big game changer in terms of time and money, but something that would kind of streamline and make an app convenient to use or make a process more convenient to handle. Okay, now there's an extra step here if your application is going to be covering multiple of those business areas. So maybe you're gonna be covering lead gen and lead nurture, or maybe you're gonna be covering fulfillment and retention and upsell, you know, whatever it is, you have multiple areas you're going to cover. What you need to do is figure out whether your app is going to be a painkiller in one area versus a vitamin in another area. So basically what that means is you need to look at whichever business component a business is most struggling with right now that you're going to be addressing. So if you look at everything you labeled in red in your list of operations, those are really big business bottlenecks that are currently causing a lot of waste. So if you were to create a solution to eliminate that waste, you, your app would be considered a painkiller. Wherever there is waste, there is pain within a business, okay? Now, on the flip side, if you labeled things in yellow or potentially in green, but in yellow, 
Those are things where a business is not necessarily experiencing waste, but they could see an increase in efficiencies, uh, in effectiveness of their processes. And if your app helps them do that, then it would be considered a vitamin. Okay, painkiller to relieve the pain, vitamin to enhance the health. So if your app is going to be addressing multiple areas within each of these business components, well, one of the areas is likely going to be the, or is likely going to need the painkiller, whereas the other is likely going to need the vitamin. For example, let's say your app is covering sales and fulfillment for a business. Well, maybe that business has a ton of areas within their fulfillment that are in the yellow. In other words, their processes aren't broken, they're working, but they could be better. But within their sales, they're really struggling. They're very much in the red. They are uh, experiencing a ton of waste. Well, that business, you know, if you were to build your app and in the very first version, you were to cover every area or every operation within both of these. Well, businesses are probably going to think that they are paying for a product that they don't really need because they're gonna be focusing on the sales only. So are they really gonna take the time to consider all the fulfillment inefficiencies when they're bleeding right here? Likely not. So for your first version, I want you to figure out where, where is the business needing that painkiller? And I want you to focus your sights on that area. And then later on, you can expand into that vitamin if it makes sense to. And now for any app, regardless of whether you're covering one of those business components or multiple, what I want you to do is take your entire list that's all red and yellow and green everywhere right now, and you're gonna focus on those red functions or operations for your first version. And then you're going to focus on those yellow functions for your next version. And as you bring users on board and you validate these different feature sets, then you're going to start to sp uh, sprinkle in those green functions. So again, if, if you are focusing on covering multiple business components, find the painkiller first and then focus on the red for your first version, the yellow for your next and so on. So everything we've gone through applies to your planning, your development, your testing and your launch. This is all critical to you building a successful product. And if you want an organized way to go through and do all of your homework, head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash perfect hyphen pilot. There will be a link in the description below and on the screen here. And you're gonna get access to a free template that will help you do exactly what we just did, but a lot easier and a lot faster. There's also an extra extended free training in there. So head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash perfect hyphen pilot and make sure that you are building that SaaS ERP in a short amount of time and you're launching the right features at the right time and that you're not waiting a year or two, maybe three or more to finally get your app out there. All right, I hope you found this helpful and we'll see you in the next one.